To hire salespeople on a mission, you need John Pikes, X Ray Vision. Hello, my friend, and welcome to the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. You are in for a treat today with Mr. John Pike. This dude did an assessment on me, and it was over 60 pages, and it's crazy how accurate this dude is. Uh, we got along great because we are cut from the same cloth, and he knows, based on my style, how to adjust his style so we connect. And I've always said this in my training. We cover this in the Implementors. We cover it in the Make Every Sale community. We as salespeople have to adjust how we sell to match how our prospects buy. And our prospects will tell us how they buy if you know the signals, if you know how to see them. You know, I've heard that uh, like Eskimos have something like 32 or 33 different words for ice and for snow. They can see the difference. To you and me, you know, I grew up in the South. Heck, I, I didn't see snow really until I was um, a freshman at the Air Force Academy. You know, got a little smatterings here and there. So I wouldn't know. But growing up in the South, you know, we have 497 ways to cook an alligator. So, hey, we got that going for us, right? In Texas, we got 342 ways to cook barbecue. So, but you get my point. When you know what you're looking for, it becomes very easy to detect and to adjust. And I tell my people, you know, I cover this again in the trainings, that I will adjust how I speak to someone, especially on the phone, um, based on how they answer. I can tell their tonality. Are, are they brusque? Uh, their volume? Um, how do they state their name? Do they state their name? Do they state their title? Uh, do they sound like they're on a cell phone? Does it sound like it's loud? Are they outdoors? Are they in a conference? You know, they just happen to answer the phone. All those things matter. And so John gets into that. You know, you have to hire the right people, especially in sales. There are certain things that you can detect that must be in their DNA, literally in their DNA that you can detect. And if it's not there, then you are inviting trouble. It's just not worth it. Uh, so we get into what all this means, how to read people, how to understand people. Uh, I've already referred him to several clients. So it's, um, uh, you're in for a treat. I like working with this guy. I'm already um, sending him business and looking at ways to send him even more because I'm a big fan of assessments. Uh, I've had several people on uh, over the years that do assessments. Uh, I like all these guys. Uh, John just has a, a very unique, detailed approach. Um, and not only is his, uh, are his assessments unique and accurate, but he's a recruiter as well. So he can help you by he'll actually consult with you, determine what you need, create the ads, uh, screen the people, and then... Uh, onboard them right, with an assessment. If they pass all those sniff tests, then he gives them over to you for the final interviews and the hiring. And then he backs them up with a one-year guarantee. I was a recruiter for a very short time, many years ago, and most recruiters will give you a 90-day guarantee. That's it. So he will give you a one-year replacement guarantee, which I have literally never heard of from anybody. So... That's what I call putting your money where your mouth is. So um, you're in for a treat. Last week, if you did not listen, go tune in as well to Dwayne Forrester's interview. Super smart guy on search engine optimization. And we get into DKM, which is a little bit new. SEO is still important. It's rolling up now more as a tactic that still has to be done. Uh, but as part of your DKM, we get into... What really works today for SEO? It is still alive and well. You still got to do it. It has just evolved. And so it's good news and bad news. It's bad news because it's some work. It's good news because your, your competition is probably too lazy uh, to get after it. They're too distracted on the menial things. But you are sharp. You listen to the sales podcast. You are a member of the free group, the implementors.com, our free Facebook group. Come hang out, come ask questions, come uh, continue the dialogue. And if you want to try out the make every sale community, it's just $47 for the first month, 100% unlimited access 
with a forced discontinuity. It means I will kick you out at the end of a month. It's not a forced continuity that sneaks in a payment on you, hoping you forget. Then you're in some sticky high dollar subscription. That's BS. So at day 28, you're going to get a reminder. Then day 29, then day 30. If you don't actively subscribe, you're kicked out. It's all good. Hey, keep keep $97 worth of products that I'll mail to you for that $47. Keep all your notes. Participate in four live interactive calls with me. Ask any question you want. It's all good. It's all good. But then if you enroll, once you sign up, you are in for life. All right. As long as I teach the program um, so, and you don't have to keep paying, right? You can do a one-time payment and basically get two months free or spread the payments out over a year. Uh, but regardless, you are in, you'll have access to the group, ask questions, hop in and out anytime you want. And I've had people in for four plus years, I think maybe even five now. Uh, I've had several uh, for the last two years on every single call because as you apply what you learn and grow, you get new problems. Okay, problems don't go away. You just get newer, bigger problems. But the nice thing is you are bigger and know how to handle them. Okay, so come come hang out with us on that. Okay, but now let's bring on our guest. John Pike, all the way from North Carolina. Welcome to the Sales Podcast, man. How the heck are you? Terrific. Thanks for having me as a guest today. So are you saying that people like me, salespeople, that we're just weak-minded and predictable, and I can just take some little test, and you can tell me everything about myself and whether I should like probably not hire myself. Is that is that what you're saying? Well, there's a lot more complexity to it, <laughs> <laughs> so I wish things were simple. Uh, and so do business owners and people that are running Look, sales. You're sales. just being nice. I know I should not hire myself. Don, I'm 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 fired. Okay. No, you actually, you actually took the assessment and your scores were off the charts. <laughs> uh, but speaking of tests and assessments, um, 100 years of research has revealed by using a personality instrument, this is going to surprise some of your listeners, that using a personality instrument for hiring is only marginally or slightly better than just looking at a person's resume to make a hiring decision. So not even meeting them, just looking at the, the person's resume, you only have a slightly better chance um, if you're using a personality profile. So the point is, is that DISC or Myers-Briggs or the host of other per personality instruments are helpful for communication and for team building and for communication skills, but they're woefully inadequate. So there's a lot of tools and instruments out there, but you have to make sure people are a lot more complicated or complex than just a personality. So we, what we do is very uh, sophisticated. It goes up much, much deeper. And, All right. So let's unwind that a little bit. So you're saying things like DISC and Myers-Briggs, it's good. It's good like for a manager to know like, okay, Wes uh, has the attention span of a gnat, put him in sales. Uh, Shannon is very detail oriented, uh, put her in accounting Right. Uh, Matthew is very uh, concerned about people's feelings, wants to make sure they get along. So put him in HR. Is that kind of intelligence? Right. Okay. So everything that you've mentioned is basically behavioral and that's okay. good. But if you think about uh, an interview, let me use the analogy kind of, or the visual of an iceberg. So when you're interviewing somebody, you're only seeing about, uh, about 12% of the iceberg is above the surface and that's personality, how much energy they have, you know, how expressive and outgoing they are. But really the 88% of what every hiring manager needs to know is hidden to the naked eye. It's below the surface. And that's why about 80% of the time, most people get burned when it comes to new hires. So things like persistence, drive, initiative, handling rejection, self-confidence, the ability to problem solve, the ability to connect with people quickly and easily. All those things are innate talents or abilities that are either built in naturally, you know, when you were born or formed at an early age um, or not. So there are some things that you can train to, and there are many things that you cannot. So that's why what we do is an absolute game changer because we give you advanced insight into what's below the surface that, that is not accessible to the human, to the human eye. Right. Um, yeah. Cause yeah, I mean, drive, no matter how many 
bonuses or perks or Starbucks gift cards you offer? I mean, some people just won't be motivated by that, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and so the, a typical disc type assessment won't tell you that, but your work does. Absolutely. So we actually use the disc profile as one of the three instruments and it's a, it's useful. However, to your point, we know based on science and statistics and just, you know, using probabilities that this we have, it's like 70 pages of data that this assessment yields. So the single most important determiner of a person's uh, consistent success in sales is the, the strength of their uh, financial motivation. So to your point, you could have all the, the, the best upside bonuses and, and commissions and, and, you know, trips and so forth. But if they're not motivated by that, it doesn't matter how compelling it is, they're not going to assert themselves. So oftentimes what happens is people look the part, they say the right things, but, you know, the, the manager is scratching their head thinking, why won't this person get out and actually do anything? Most right. of the time, it's either they don't have the right motivation or drive, and which, which you can't teach. You just can't, you know, turn, turn, that, turn that off and on. Or they don't have the talent innately to do what you're asking them to do. Right. Interesting. So why do people just try to wing it? Oftentimes, I think there's a lot of um, people have, are very skeptical. Um, they've been, they, you know, there have been a lot of promises made in the past, and they've tried some things, and maybe they haven't worked out. I think the second biggest reason is they just don't know what they don't know, that there's something that's significantly better that can quadruple their hiring effectiveness. Right. So typically what I do is uh, it's very experiential in nature. It's not, you know, theoretical. I ask uh, a hiring manager to give me two of their people, one of them the very best on their team, one of them the the lowest performer. And I tell, you know, give them the the assessment, have them take it. And I, I say, be sure not to tell me who's your top and who's your bottom. I'll tell you who's top and why they're going to be continue to be the top and why the bottom is going to continue to struggle. And uh, in doing this um, thousands of times, I've never been wrong. Not one time. It's, right. The science is so compelling. Uh, you're using these advanced statistics that it's, it's, it's really almost impossible to be wrong. Yeah. Cause I mean, the nice thing with assessing salespeople and, and do you primarily focus on salespeople or can this apply if I'm hiring an accountant? Yeah, it implies um, the principles are universal. So I okay. hire everything from you know entry level all the way up to CEO and everywhere in between. Pretty much every industry. The only thing I really don't touch is IT software developers. Um, I outsource that part of it, but pretty much everything else. So in the last month alone, I've hired sales engineers. I hired a president. I helped hire um, uh, somebody in accounting. Uh, so it's very diverse. But sales is my definite sweet spot. That's where we spend. You hired a president. You hired President Trump. What? <laughs> Not Trump. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, Venezuela. They need a new president, right? I yeah, mean, uh, absolutely. <laughs> all kind of trouble everywhere. Right. Um, so, but I guess the, the nice thing with salespeople is like if, if I ask you who's the best accountant or who's the best architect, mm-hmm. I mean, there's some subjectivity there, right? True. Whereas we know, like, who's the best Ford salesman in North Carolina in the last three years? I mean, we can like look that up and see most units, highest profit margin, right? In real estate, who sold the most units, blah, blah, blah. So it's, so it's easy to, and, and you can, and you know who the dogs are, right? Well, here's number one, here's number 101. Okay. I mean, we can give them tests, right? See the results and just do that over and over and over again. And basically that's where, all of this has evolved right over the last hundred years, like you said. Mm-hmm. Part so, of the challenge though, Wes, and I'm, I'm sure you see this is that uh, writing a resume is a separate skill set altogether. And most salespeople can writing, right? It's true. <laughs> there is a <laughs> lot of that. contests. Right? You win, you're hired. Oh, damn it. <laughs> you are supposed to believe that stuff. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> That that's part of the, the, the challenge. Another part is, is that they, most people don't know to list their achievements or their accomplishments. I mean, I'm, I'm doing this day in and day out and it's staggering how many people don't know how to write an effective resume. You should always have your most compelling bullet points first and second for every position that you've ever held. And it should be something like, um, 
you know, I was, you know, two X my quota, you know, or I was the number one person on the sales team out of 15 people. And, uh, they typically don't, don't, uh, you know, document those types of things. And so therefore, you know, when you're trying to hire somebody, brag? I mean, do they, I think it's, uh, normally this is what I see as a trend. If people write it themselves, it understates their ability. If they have professional help, it's very noticeable because of the, you know, the resume and it overstates their ability. So they, I, I just think they just don't know that they're supposed to do it. Right. Well, after I got to page 412 of my resume, I mean, they just, they told me just to give them a synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so people, they, they don't know what to put on, but then the hiring managers though, they don't know either. Right. Right. They're, they're going by gut feel. Oh, I, I like the guy. Oh, I don't right. like the guy. Like, why? Why do you like the guy? Why don't you like the guy? I mean, and they can't really put their finger on it. Are they just, maybe they're high I or high D, right? It just feels right. right hire the guy. Like, dude, do you know the impact this is going to have? Right. If we hire the wrong person. And sure. I guess they really don't know the impact, do they? Well, we, we have some help in some recent statistics are that the, um, the average cost associated with turnover or finding a new person, the expenses come to an average of $115,000. That includes separation costs, training costs, and acquisition costs. Now, as you and I both know, that's a drop in the bucket in terms of the opportunity cost, the loss of goodwill, you know, um, and, and missed sales. You're better to have almost a territory vacant than have somebody that's weak. But, uh, you know, another, another challenge that you, that you kind of hinted at was um, – a lot of companies, because they have such an awful track record with hiring, they drag their feet and call it being selective when really, if they have a rock star in front of them, they're, they're, they're turning them off, they're alienating them, and, they, and they're risking losing that, that A player. So because they don't know if, if the person's an A player, they're going to take too much time and potentially somebody else is going to come in and mow their lawn. Yeah. So that's another um, issue that most companies have. They don't, they don't, their, their system, their process is not hired for speed. Yeah. And in today's market, you absolutely with all the records that they're breaking with unemployment, you, man, you've got to hire fast. Yeah. And like we know in sales, time kills deals, right? Exactly. Um, but then it comes down to expense, right? I was a recruiter for a short time years ago and you know, it's, it's 30, 35%, sometimes even higher if we can get it, um, of a placement. So, you know, total compensation first year, right? So if, if I'm hiring a $100,000 salesperson, then and I get a recruiter, man, I got to give $30,000, $35,000 to get this person. That, I mean, that's going to slow me down from making that decision. Right. Well, one of the things that's um... – that you've mentioned that uh, is interesting about the whole business in general, as it relates to recruiters is that they typically only offer a three month replacement guarantee. And it's typically for, you know, a lack of performance. And oftentimes depending on the industry, that's not long enough because the sales cycles are an awful lot longer, you know, than three months to determine whether or not the person is going to be good long-term. Right. So how, how we differentiate ourselves and help to eliminate or mitigate a lot of that risk is we provide all of our clients with a one-year replacement guarantee. And it's also unconditional, which means if they get sick, if they die, if their spouse gets a dream job to Hawaii, right? It, like you said, it is a lot of investment. So we want to protect our clients to the highest degree and give them you know, as much as the highest level of confidence possible that we can deliver. So- right. You know, we typically have about an 80 to 90% success rate. Now, I know in most organizations globally, 20% of the sales force consistently delivers 80% of the total sales revenue. And the reason for it is the 20% have things that the other 80% will never have at the same you know, extent, like drive and motivation to achieve, to be the best, uh, the ability to quickly and easily build trust and rapport. I mean, that's an innate talent. It's difficult to train that into someone. So um, that's, that's another aspect of it. And here's something I think you'll find interesting, Wes, um, some other recent research that it, they're saying that it's taking – to get a new hire to full productivity is 65% of businesses are saying it takes at least seven months to bring a new hire up to speed. 
and 29% say, says it takes at least one year. Now, why that is significant is because the average rep today, salesperson, only stays on board uh, of a company for an average of 17 months. Mm. So at the worst, you've got four months of full productivity, and at the best, you have seven months of full productivity before turnover is going to take place. So that gets back to hiring the right person you know, from the, smart, from the start. If you don't hire the right person, not only they're not going to stay longer, they're not going to produce as much, and then you've got all that $114,000 replacement cost. So mm. paying a, you know, a, a, for a service up front that may seem to be expensive. Now, we charge typically 25% of the annual uh, salary only, not based on their whole comp. And then uh, if we do multiple hires, we may use a fixed rate. Uh, if anyone's listening here is using a recruiter, I would highly encourage you to go to a fixed rate. There's a lot of lack of integrity in the industry. So, Wes, I may say to you, hey, you know, if I'm interviewing candidates for you, I may say, hey, Wes, you know, I know that the salary range on this is only up to 80000 but this person is not going to move for a hunt unless you pay them 100 Right. And so what happens is I get 25% of 20 more thousand dollars, right? So what you, what, what you want, that's kind of almost like um, a conflict of interest. So a better way for companies to do it is to do a flat fee regardless of what the salary is. And then you know that the, the recruiter is not going to be playing games on you. Well, I, I was always interested in, um, you know, advertising firms that get, they get paid a percentage of your ad spend, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, well, they definitely are going to be motivated to have you spend more money on ads. You know? mm -hmm. right. uh, and I guess it's worked, but I know others have changed. I know Ogilvy was, was big uh, on changing that many years ago. But, uh, yeah, it's an interesting take because they're going to yeah, – they may steer your own. Um, but um, you do a lot of work. You've specialized in real estate, right? Is there – um, are, are they unique type salespeople or, or what led you to, to niche in that, uh, to, uh, to a small degree at least? Yeah, that's yes. Yeah. So about seven years ago, I started to, to specialize in real estate and it just was happenstance really never, never targeted or even knew about residential real estate as a viable market to help. But uh, it all started when someone asked me to be the lead keynote speaker at an event with the top 5% broker owners in the country and uh, Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank was a middle speaker, and Glenn, um, uh, Glenn Beck was the wrap-up speaker. And when I stepped off stage, 20 people literally signed up on the spot and said, I need your help desperately. So what I didn't know All at right. the time was that <laughs> I said, okay, I think this is a viable market. Um, so I found out in digging a little bit deeper that there's a 95% turnover rate in residential real estate. Oh. And interestingly oh. – you think the 2080 rule is bad in, uh, with most other industries. For them, it's 5% sell 95% of the total homes out there. And less than 5% actually sell more than $5 million worth of volume. So let me yeah. give you a quick example. There's this guy who's a former pastor of all things. And in his first year, he sold $14.5 million worth of real estate. And in his second year, he sold over $25 million. Now that is in the top one-tenth of 1%. But what we knew going in with, again, getting, getting back to the high level of predictability is that he had this, what I call the sales DNA through and through. He had the right personality profile. He had, his motivators were in the top five, five percent, if not better. And his talents were amazing. So it really wasn't a matter of if the guy was going to succeed, but you know, how successful he was going to be. And he continues to crush it. So we had Jesus as his co-pilot. Can I get an amen? <laughs> <laughs> right went from being into the souls to sales so uh <laughs> right so uh anyway that's pretty uh, cool now yeah. so did the company use you to hire him they or did. did you assess him later no they 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 uh, asked us to uh, to handle all their hiring and he okay. he is the uh the owner is actually the number one uh exit realty broker in the in the world um, wow. so this guy is, he gets almost, he, he's, he wins almost every award. The guy with miles will just stay on stage the whole time because every time they, they ask for the next award, he's pretty, pretty much up there taking everything. Uh, so what I find, um, about half of my clients in real estate are in the top, uh, this really elite group, the wall street journal, real trends, top two fifty. So there's over a million 
you know, these, of these firms across the country. And, uh, you know, there's only a select group that get to be in that category based on their volume. Yeah. And uh, half of the people I'm working with are there. And we've had some just incredible success stories with people starting out with very few homes and are now over a thousand, a thousand homes, you know, annually. Right. And it's all based on the quality of the people. Um, are there things that hiring managers can do to kind of stack the odds in their favor or should they just not play games and just bite the bullet and invest in, and just doing this right? I think the, the best, the ultimate thing to do would be to, to invest in doing it right because you're going to get a higher return. You're going to minimize your risk and, and maximize your, you know, your value. However, if I was to say, you know, what are some suggestions I would give? I would say to help minimize your risk on the hiring side, you know, you've got to try to really develop a culture of high performance within your team. And so, you know, quite a few companies will have some type of a perk or a bonus if uh, a current employee recommends someone that's really, really good. Now, that can be problematic, too, because, um, you know, the person's getting compensation. Sometimes they may have a, there may, may be a tendency to not be completely, you know, the person might be a B player versus an A player, right? But they want to get the, 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 the bonus of the five grand or whatever it might be. But anytime you have someone that you know and trust already that is going to vouch for another person, right, then, you've, then you're minimizing your odds in a number of different ways. So that would be definitely one big suggestion. Um, another suggestion would be, um, you know, we also know from research that if you onboard correctly, you can actually increase new hire retention by 82% and productivity by over 70%. So how they get started in the job is of the utmost importance. Right. Uh, you know, most times people make a hire, they, they say their prayers and take their vitamins and, and hope after 90 days that the person's going to work out. Right. You really don't have a high level of confidence. But um, what we can do with, with the assessment is uh, we can really help differentiate that process. Uh, so, you know, if, I, if you were just newly hired by me, Wes, here's kind of what that conversation would sound like. Wes, of the hundreds of people that applied, you were in the top 5%. It's not a matter of if you're going to succeed with us. It's a matter of how successful you can be with our support. So, you know, we, then we would go through, hey, your personality style you know, is ideal for sales. Your motivators are on the top 1%. Your talents are amazing. Again, it's not a matter of if you're going to succeed. And we, based on your communication, your disc profile, here's how we know you like to be communicated with. So that whole, who are you? Do I like you? Do I trust you? That relationship between you and your immediate manager is accelerated tremendously. And you're going to be a lot more highly effective. Um, so, cause one thing that you do differently um, is I mean, you will interview the customer, the hiring manager, mm -hmm. and is it part of your fee that you, you'll you run the ad and actually screen these people? I mean, you're doing more than just giving them a, a link to take a test and sending them a PDF. Correct. So that's a, that's a great point. So you think about the traditional model where you're paying, you know, maybe like 25% of the annual salary. Um, that's one model. Another model is that we we will provide the service well. well, we'll do everything instead of using maybe a full-time recruiter to go out and proactively contact people. We'll actually create the ad copy. We'll post it to 60 different online job boards. Uh, we'll do all of the, uh, the, the screening on the front end. Uh, no one actually even gets looked at unless they take the assessment. We provide a short list of people, et cetera. And that's a cost effective uh, option. Um, much more so for smaller companies. Um, right. So that's kind of what I do for the real estate and mortgage industry. It's a lot more cost effective. Um, I even have all-inclusive plans where it's an all-you-can-eat, an unlimited plan. And uh, they tend to like that very much because their cost is fixed. Right. And, uh, you know, and then these, you know, it's interesting. The, the, the residential real estate, they have been my best clients in my, in my career. Because they're visionary, they're progressive, they know that they're not good at hiring and, and they don't have the time, you know, to be able to handle it. So they just outsource it completely to, to us right. and then we, we, we pick it up and, and run it for them. So it's a, it's a win-win all the way around. If somebody's hired, though, as a realtor with no base, is that where you just negotiate the fee ahead of time? 
Because I mean, yes. there's nothing, there's nothing to yes. base it on, right, as a percentage. Absolutely. So what we do is we do a monthly fee. And uh, for that you know, fee, they, they can hire a transaction coordinator, uh, the director of first impressions, the director of operations. So we do the whole, the whole company. Every position is included yeah. in that. Now, some of, the, some of my clients are smaller, so they may only hire you know, maybe three or four people a year. But uh, it's, it sure. still works out. still works out really well. Well, I always tell people, um, cause I've got a, I call it no more sales duds. Um, and it's walks them through the process of bringing on good salespeople. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you and I need to talk about how to more tightly integrate your program into that. But I always tell them, you know, you're, you're always recruiting, Mm-hmm. You know, you may not always be hiring, but you're always recruiting. And, you know, and I'll ask him like, Hey, how, like, you know, I love college football, you know, and I'll say, Hey, when did, you know, Alabama or Clemson, you know, when did they win the national championship? And, you know, people, you know, whatever, January 11th, 2018, whatever. I'm like, no, they won it uh, February, you know, 12th, uh, 2012. Right. And they're like, what are you talking about? You know, and I say, well, in, you know, January of 2018, there were a certain number of seniors on that roster. And those seniors, a lot of those seniors um, were redshirted. So they've played five years, Mm -hmm. you know, and they were signed five and a half years ago. Right. Uh, and they were identified during the previous, you know, their senior season in high school, which was actually, you know, could be six years, even seven years. They'll actually start talking to you as a sophomore a little bit. Right. So they could easily be seven or eight years before that championship was won. Their recruiting efforts going back that far impacted their ability to win six, seven, eight years later. And I'm t- and the light bulb kind of goes off when I put it in that scenario. You know, you, you're always building bench strength because most people, they don't start looking for a new salesperson until the superstar leaves. Right. (laughs) Unexpectedly, you know, it's like, oh, really? We thought LeBron James would stay at Cleveland for 47 years. We never (laughs) imagined he would leave, come back, leave again. What? what? I mean, it's right. How, how do you. Do you, do you beat them about the head to, to get them thinking that way? Or do you just only work with the smart ones? <laughs> well, uh, from a sales point of view, you, you know that everybody's not the best prospect, you know, for you or not a quali- not a qualified, you know, probable buyer. So I tend to gravitate to the people that are already successful in the top 5% because they get it. You don't have, you have to spend a lot less time educating them. They're more visionary and progressive. Um, you know, but what I have seen with people who are kind of slower to make a decision is that once they actually see this work in action and, and they actually take the, the profile themselves and they understand how accurate it is, then the penny drops. And they're like, well, you know, the reason why I wait till my high performer leaves before I want to fill, backfill the position is because my track record prior has been so abysmal. I know that I only have about a, a one in five chance of getting a star. So all this time that I spend, which takes, my, takes me out of my role doing what I do best, right? And then I've got all this information, drug test, background check, uh, all this interview stuff. It is very time and costly, time intensive. So you really can't blame, you know, entrepreneurs and hiring managers for being reluctant to hire because up until, you know, but, you know, we're still operating in the dark ages when it comes to hiring. It doesn't have to be that way. You know, what we do is a total breakthrough. Um, right. Now, here's another suggestion. Now, unfortunately, without using our services, it's very difficult to, to implement. But let me mention another way kind of to, to different, you know, in sales, you know, everybody needs to have a unique selling proposition, right? It's, people buy based on what's different, right? What's better. So when you think about all of your listeners, think about your interview process. What is different, differentiated, or better, unique about how you are looking to bring on talent than everybody else. So here's what I know. The vast majority of people will interrogate people like you wouldn't believe. And then in the last five minutes, they'll say, oh, 
in the last five minutes that we have remaining, what questions do you have? Yeah, do you have any questions for me? Like, yeah, can I leave now? <laughs> right. Absolutely. So just think about that for a second. I know it's been a long time since you or I were actually interviewed, you know, a traditional interview because, you know, we're entrepreneurs. However, that's the case the vast majority of the time. And again, the reason is because it's, it's operating out of a scarcity mentality because you have all this doubt, all this apprehension, all this fear. You're trying to drill them and pepper them with as many questions as you can to make sure that the person, you know, to see if there's things that you can expose that, that uh, you know, is going to be the knockout punch. Well, because w- when you have the type of analytics that we have, what I teach my clients to do is very different. It basically says something like this. It says, you know, after the initial small talk, when we, when we just meet each other for the first time, I want you to come prepared with a host of questions to ask me and you put them in the driver's seat. Now there's a novel idea, right? Where everyone else is basically, you know, interrogating them, right? Peppering them with all these questions. You give them the reins and you allow them to ask questions. And the reason you say, say, look, I know this is an important decision. You give the best waking hours of your day to your career. This is a very important decision. We want to make sure that you get all your questions answered. Heck, if most people did that, they'd be light years ahead, right? right? But again, Wes, people aren't able to do that because they don't have the type of advanced insight that we have. We already know the person's a rock star. We already know they're in the top you know, 5% or 10%. Otherwise, I wouldn't be recommending that my clients, you know, that they're sitting in front of my client to begin with. Yeah. Um, how, how many times you interview somebody in the first 30 seconds, you're like, oh boy, mm. how can I close this down in, the, in five minutes and yet not be disrespectful? Right. So, so again, the cost of all, all of that is, is immense. So you really have to look at how are you going to differentiate the process? And when, and you know, a second interview is not about me. It's not about trying to protect me. It's about them. So you say, look, if you, I know this is an important decision. Um, if you would like to come back and to meet more of the people on our team to have a higher level of confidence, you know, that, that you're making a good decision here, the best decision we would love for you to be able to come back. How does that sound to you? Again, you're completely reversing the typical experience that most people have. And I have had some great people sign on to, to the, my client just because of the interview process, just because of how different it was and how much of a breath of fresh air it was. You need to apply this to uh, Tinder and Match.com. <laughs> you know what? Uh, quick, quick story. I actually contacted match, but they never contacted me back. I think, uh, it's, uh, and I also had another person in California starting a new company, a dating service, who's interested in using the assessments. And he actually included some of my content in his book, but you know, you see the, you know, they say that opposites attract, not really opposites get divorced. I mean, if you don't know what you don't know, if you don't know your spouse's, you know, style and the diversity that's there and how to, you know, it's, it's, instead of it becoming personal, um, it's going to be a lot more difficult. So, right. you know, it, you, you really does have – you've hit, hit another, another vertical for sure. It has a lot of application there with, relation, <laughs> with relationships. Very cool. All right. Well, we will link to you. But where should we send people if they want to find out more and uh, see what you're up to and how you can help them? Sure. Uh, my, our website is thetalentgenius.com because it's really all about the talent. That's what we measure, what you can't see. So thetalentgenius.com. And my email address is simply John, my first name, J-O-H-N, at thetalentgenius.com. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for a short time, um, I'd be happy to make uh, – I, I would be happy to do a, a, a free trial for those of your progressive kind of visionary listeners who are – going to act quickly. You know, we're not going to make that available for very long. Maybe the first, you know, 10 or 12 people that respond, I'll do that. I'll take your best salesperson, the one that's struggling the most. I'll evaluate both of them. I'll tell them, you know, why the best person is the best person, why the, you know, the the worst person is probably kind of doomed to kind of stay at that level of performance and how they can continue to hire more rock stars. Right. Very cool. That is a nice offer. And yeah, I'll be linking out and you've got a book too, right? Coming out a higher fast, fire fast. Yes. It's my second book. Um, exactly. Higher fast, fire fast. The common adage is higher, slow, fire fast, but that is absolutely the wrong approach as, uh, some of the reasons that we've talked in, in terms of, uh, our time today. Yeah. I, and I've said that myself, higher, slow, fire fast. So that's, um, that'll be an interesting take, um, and approach 
Because you're right. I mean, time kills deals. Everybody's moving fast. Um, but we're afraid because we, we'll make the wrong decisions, so we want to mull it over. And the fact is we really just don't have the tools. We're not equipped. We're overwhelmed, so we put it off. And, mm-hmm. and that's the death spiral. So just avoid the death spiral. Go see John. All right? So thetalentgenius.com. John Pike, all the way from the East Coast, man. Thanks for coming on the Sales Podcast. It's been great. My pleasure. Thank you, Wes. Take care. Told you it was going to be good. You've got to get the right people on board. And when it comes to sales, while there are certain things that can be taught and you can get an introvert to do very well, there are certain things that must be inherent. Trust me, I've made a living since 1997 feeding a family of nine based on my ability to flap my gums and close the sale. I've been coaching and leading people, training people for a long time. You've got to find these attributes. Otherwise, you're just pushing on a rope. Okay? Invest the money to do it right, to bring on the right people. These assessments, they're based on science that they are uh, objective, based on literally 100 years of measuring people. Okay? You've got to get the right people on board. I tell my sales managers all the time that their number one job is to recruit. Just like college sports. You've got to always be looking for new players because you know, and especially in football, right? They know they're only going to have this kid for five years at most. They can do a red shirt, you know, first year, then four years. Most of them are leaving after their sophomore or junior year um, because there's too much money. So these, these colleges, they're always recruiting. It's a full-time job. It's the same for you. You've got to be finding great people and then enabling them, empowering them, okay, so they stay. Don't worry about the laggards, the turkeys, the dogs. Just ignore them, okay? You're better off to find better people than try to put in time and energy and assets into turning a turkey into an eagle. It just isn't going to happen, okay? So learn how to hire great people. Give John a chance. Give him a call. You'll be glad you did, okay? You've got to get this right. Uh, I've already sent him to a couple of people. I'm going to be sending him to a lot more. His ability, his willingness to run the ads and screen and then back it up with a one-year guarantee, it's unbelievable. So give him a shout, okay? Give me a shout as well. Come hang out with us at theimplementors.com. Let's continue the conversation. It's my free group. Come uh, ask the questions that you can't ask because you're not on the podcast, okay? Theimplementors.com. And if you're serious about growing your sales, you want to spend time with me all the time, ask questions any time of the day or night, any day of the week. Join me live every week uh, for a live interactive video call. Get all my videos, workbooks, etc. Join makeeverysale.com. You can kick the tires for $47 for an entire month, Okay. Then you have a choice on how to enroll. But once you're paid up, you have access to all the content forever. It's yours, okay? I've been teaching this for at least four years. People that joined day one have been grandfathered in to all the price increases. As I add new content and features, they still get it. And you will too, all right? Makeeverysale.com. Thanks for listening. Please be sure to subscribe. That certainly helps. Share this episode. Give us some feedback, some comments on the blog. Hit me up on social media. And now, go sell something. 